Good morning, welcome to the premium and public video discussion, kind of doing a combo for today, for the end of the week, just a little bit of a Father's Day present ahead of the weekend for Father's Day weekend, so I uh, hope all you fathers out there have an enjoyable weekend, and as always, we'll be responsible for making all the pancakes and eggs and whatnot, as normally we do around here in our neck of the woods, so um, I hope you have an enjoyable weekend. Now let's talk about a couple of different topics and again for those of you who aren't premium members we do this every day Monday through Friday uh, we do uh, analysis of the latest weather information and weather events and uh, we dive into more of a more technical nature in the forecast so if you're definitely interested in that definitely wanted to check out the premium consulting membership and also if you have plans for the summer you have birthday parties, graduation parties. It's usually a good reason to subscribe so that way you can get that specific forecast for that day for your special day, whether that's weddings or whatnot. So let's talk about the tropics first as we are watching a disturbance that's right around here that still has a slight chance of developing. But at this point, what we're seeing here is a lot of interaction with the land and this low level circulation not really developing and you can tell that by the nature of this convection you see how it's basically linear now when you have a tropical low pressure system getting its act together you'll start to see convection wrapping around the low level center and you kind of get like this ball of convection really focusing over the low level circulation or around it right in this case it's clearly linear in nature which tells you more that we have a weak circulation and more of a trough here and that's showing up pretty much on the wind guidance here that we're seeing off of the central american coast honduras right here mexico's right here you got belize and this circulation is stretched out and you get this trough right along the coast here pretty much aligning right with our convection which is a is up here and so there's really hasn't been any sign of any type of development with this disturbance and so right now I'm not really seeing this as uh, anything that is uh, impressive or, or significant in nature that's likely to develop and as this drifts right into the Yucatan Peninsula that pretty much put it puts a kibosh on any type of potential development going forward so the tropics overall right now are pretty quiet Enjoy it while it lasts, because based on the data we're looking at, well, it probably won't remain that way. What type of data? Well, again, we have our La Nina in place. Now, it is starting to weaken, and again, I've been talking about this with the premium members, and also if you uh, visit the live chat at 8 p.m. Uh, every Wednesday, this week it will be on Monday, so just uh, remember that. See the Indian Ocean out here? You see how it's kind of cooling? Earlier on, it was hot, very hot, very well above normal. And that instigated the development of a stronger La Nina in the spring. Since then, it has steadily weakened. And so as a result, the support for our La Nina has steadily weakened. And so we're seeing that very clearly here. But we still have other influences also to be keeping an eye on you have your negative PDO pattern right here so this is going to instigate the support for a nice upper level low or trough right around the Aleutians and the Gulf of Alaska that supports a nice ridge over the Rockies and Plains and you have your negative AMO which is basically cool water over the Atlantic extending into the Caribbean this is textbook signature right here textbook so it's very warm in the western atlantic cool water relatively i mean look it's still temperatures you know bath water warm but uh, not as warm as it can get be so this influences the potential for rapid intensification of, of tropical systems but research into this influence shows that it doesn't really impact in terms of the frequency of tropical systems, just the ability to create rapid intensification. So certainly something that we're going to be keeping an eye on. And this is why in the tropical forecast, seasonal forecast, I said, keep an eye on the Gulf of Mexico and locations around the Bahamas and Western Atlantic, because right in this area, you could get tropical systems rapidly developing and right up the coast. So I'll have to keep an eye on that. But this tells me right here we have several fundamental features 
ridge here, ridge here, weakness somewhere around here. And I say somewhere because it will fluctuate depending on the strength of this ridge and this ridge, which will be controlled by this trough. So we know that those are the influences. And we know that in terms of the SOI data, right, which is a great measurement for the atmospheric influence uh, from La Nina, it supports a moderate La Nina. Now, when you get around 10, like we were for much of this winter, that's more weak La Nina. When you get around 15, 16, that's moderate. Strong La Ninas are up here, which we are nowhere near. So we have a nice moderate La Nina influence. And so that impacts our forecast, okay, our 500 millibar pattern. Now, this is the European Ensemble guys. I want to give you a warning about the GFS. Uh, it had some errors uh, from the zero Z guidance. The WPC is kind of staying away from it. So I wouldn't trust it or use it at this time. Um, so I'm kind of leaning more on the European Ensemble guidance as it has been in pretty much steady now this pattern here we've been seeing all spring and out into early summer and it creates a lot of volatility because this sets up your high pressure system around Maine your maritime air mass trying to invade your ridge axis over the Great Lakes through the Tennessee River Valley supports building heat waves so you get a clash here of very hot and humid weather conditions over the mid-Atlantic where Washington DC and Baltimore are in the 90s uh, possibly even Philadelphia and New York City is stuck in the 60s and 70s. Well, uh, that's essentially what we're going to be seeing as we move forward for this upcoming week with that clash. And guess what? That theme continues. Remember what I said, ridge here, ridge here, weakness here. And that continues to be a theme throughout the rest of this month. And as we continue off into July, ridge here, ridge here, trough here. Now, the intensity of these troughs will be variable, okay? So what this typically means is that, hey, we're going to have still plenty of cold fronts marching their way through. We're going to have wide variety of wide volatility, should I say, in our temperature regime. And this typically translates to a very active and unsettled weather pattern for the summer. And guess what? In the latest updated data, the 46-day forecast from the EPS that just got updated, well, guess what? It basically shows the same theme all over again, all the way until we get to August. Now, this latter part of the forecast usually is uh, over enhanced, but you get the overall theme. You wouldn't trust the details here, but you get the overall theme. Look at the theme. Ridge here, ridge in the Western Atlantic, trough here. It's the same thing, rinse and repeat. So if you're looking for a major shift in the weather pattern thus far, I'm not seeing much support for that, okay? So uh, we continue to remain in this active weather pattern. If you have friends and family out towards the West Coast, especially California through Texas, uh, there's going to be drought issues. There's going to be uh, significant concerns for very hot temperatures. Uh, and uh, with this trough dynamic set in place in a negative PDO, climatologically wise, this is bad news for anyone who's concerned about the drought in California and the desert southwest. Um, if you think it's been bad, it's going to get worse. And uh, climatologically speaking, if you go back to 1200 uh, AD, uh, anywhere, anywhere between 1190 and 1210, should I say, uh, there have been droughts that literally wiped out civilizations out here of uh, Native uh, Americans out here. So, uh, yeah, it's not getting much better and it's only going to get worse so sorry about that bad news if you have any friends or family out here but at the same time that also leads to above normal rainfall out here over the east coast as the patterns balance themselves out so very interesting pattern definitely setting up so now we have the basic idea of what we're dealing with let's take a look at the next several days first of all our observations ranging from the upper 60s to mid 70s over the interior, lower to mid 70s along the coast. Guess what? We have a cold front on the way. Right now we have a humid air mass in place. You can tell that with the dew points in the upper 60s to lower 70s. We have low clouds, a few, little bit of fog. No showers and thunderstorms yet. 
But as the cold front approaches, we'll see that change. Winds are from the southwest around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Those winds will be increasing to the west around 10 to 20 miles per hour, which we can see behind a cold front out here in central Pennsylvania, uh, with temperatures falling off uh, pretty quickly. Notice the humidity starts to fall off at a pretty good rate. And you can see that here on our latest uh, radar and surface map, there's this warm front that is finally lifting through. Here comes a cold front on the way. Here's a prefrontal trough approaching. This prefrontal trough will ignite the potential for isolated thunderstorms. This cold front will move through this evening, and you will notice a significant drop in the humidity. And you can see that pretty clearly here. Your deep tropical moisture, where you have your precipitable water values over 1.5, that's all pushed off the coast. So that's great news in reducing the threat for severe thunderstorms because you're reducing the moisture content in the atmosphere. But you still have plenty of moisture in place. And then here comes your dry air coming in behind it. And you can see on the surface map, much cooler. There is your cold air transport. And it shows up nicely here at 850 millibars as well. I'm not looking for a lot of severe weather out of this because the vertical wind shear is present, but it's steadily weakening. So I'm not seeing uh, the support for a lot of widespread severe thunderstorms in this scenario. And the instability is a bit lacking. Uh, take a look at the mid-level rates which you do in the morning. Not all that impressive. So this clearly supports more of an isolated nature in these uh, thunderstorms. A few thunderstorms will be capable of touching severe levels. Uh, very, very few. And we're talking about all of the northern Mid-Atlantic here. Okay, so the primary threat here is going to be that isolated thunderstorm with a brief heavy downpour. It lasts about 15 to 30 minutes. See on the infrared, on the, I'm sorry, to say on, the pos, on the visible satellite picture, getting ahead of myself, the low clouds are burning away quickly. As sun breaks out, the atmosphere would, should start becoming a little bit more unstable. Notice the cumulus field here is not really expanding all that much. Uh, we'll wait to see if that grows, and this is where we're going to get our thunderstorm development from, from this cumulus field that's starting to grow. And on the infrared satellite picture, you see the primary thunderstorms out here towards the upper Midwest. There will be no impact for us. But notice this swirl here. Well, let's zoom out and jump to the water vapor satellite picture. This is our upper level low. This will be diving south towards the Gulf of Maine, and this will be driving a polar air mass into the region, and it will be at the same time digging over the northwestern Atlantic, and this is going to transport a well below normal polar air mass into the region. Take a look at the data here. For today, you can see the lifting associated with our cold front and the PVA, it, it's not really all that organized, not really all that impressive, um, and it's moving through pretty quickly. And you can see the cold air transport here. Watch this for the weekend. That just, I mean, this is well below normal for this time of year. Enjoy this. You know, get it, get put it in a jar, bottle it up, because it is not going to be this cool all summer. Uh, so it is going to be very pleasant this weekend. And with these cooler temperatures, we also are going to see a significant drop in the precipitable water values over the region, setting up dry period, a dry weekend with very low humidity, with not much in the way of moisture in the atmosphere at all. When you get down to these levels here, that is very little moisture in the atmosphere. So it's setting up to be an excellent weekend. In terms of our thunderstorms, taking, using the latest mesoscale data, again, I like the idea of stronger thunderstorms and a higher potential for severe thunderstorms in Connecticut on northeastward because this is where you're going to get your strongest uh, focus of PVA, okay, positive rotisity of advection. Down towards New York City metro, again, you have that isolated threat from, let's say, around noon all the way on to about 6 p.m. And then if you're going out to the baseball games, the Mets or the Phillies, uh, the Phillies game, you might dodge an isolated shower or thunderstorm uh, during the first game. The second game, uh, you should be fine safely for the Mets. They will be dry this evening. So let's walk through this forecast for today. Again, watch out for a few isolated thunderstorms. It's going to be hot out there with winds down sloping off the Appalachian Mountains. Look for high temperatures in the lower to mid 80s over the interior, mid to upper 80s along the coast, upper 80s to lower 90s in the Delaware River Valley. Heat index is going to feel like the lower to mid 90s. 
for tonight into tomorrow morning. Clear skies take hold. Humidity crashes. Look for lows in the lower to mid 50s over the interior. Upper 50s to lower 60s in the suburbs. Lower to mid 60s in your urban areas and along the immediate coast. In the afternoon tomorrow, look for a scattered cloud cover with high temperatures ranging from the lower to mid 60s over the interior, upper 60s to lower 70s along the coast. On Sunday, high pressure and control with excellent weather conditions. A bit breezy this weekend, by the way, with winds from the northwest of 10 to 20 miles per hour. Low temperatures on Sunday will range from the upper 40s to lower 50s over the interior, lower to mid 50s along the coast. High temperatures will range from the mid to upper 60s over the interior, upper 60s to lower 70s along the coast, lower to mid 70s in the Delaware River Valley. On Monday, high pressure starts to exit the region. Look for tranquil conditions though, with lows in the mid to upper 40s over the interior, lower to mid 50s along the coast, high temperatures in the lower to mid 70s over the interior, mid to upper 70s along the coast, and upper 70s to lower 80s in the Delaware River Valley. On Tuesday, a warm front will approach with period of showers. Some of these showers may be heavy at times, so I'll have to keep an eye on that. Look for lows in the upper 50s to lower 60s and high temperatures ranging from the mid to upper 70s over the interior, upper 60s to mid 70s along the coast, and upper 70s to lower 80s in the Delaware River Valley. Temperatures will be highly dependent on the location of the warm front as we get into Tuesday afternoon. Now, on Wednesday and Thursday, the frontal boundary essentially stalls out, and I warned about this uh, yesterday. So the scenario is simply this. The frontal boundary stalls out, and to the south and west of that frontal boundary, you'll have temperatures ranging from the mid-60s to lower 70s for lows, mid-80s to lower 90s for highs. To the northeast of the warm front, temperatures will range from the lower to mid-60s for lows, but high temperatures will range from the upper 60s to mid 70s. So quite a range in temperatures and it will be highly dependent on the location of that frontal boundary. So just be aware of that, that this is a very highly volatile period of the weather where you can easily be 90 one day and 70 the next, especially if you're around central New Jersey. Thursday night into Friday, a cold front moves through with showers and thunderstorms clearing out by the late afternoon on Friday. Look for low temperatures in the lower to mid 60s over the interior, mid to upper 60s along the coast, upper 60s to lower 70s in the Delaware River Valley. High temperatures will range from the lower to mid 80s over the interior, mid 70s to lower 80s along the coast, and upper 70s to lower 80s in the Delaware River Valley. That is your forecast discussion for today. Have a wonderful weekend, and as always, stay safe out there.